Hey guys, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret about the stock market and I'm not sure if you know about this and you might not believe me but I'm gonna say it anyways and you can look this up if you don't believe me, okay? So the secret is stocks at times and in certain circumstances can in fact go down in price. Let that sink in for a moment. Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're talking about Hertz, the car rental company. Now I'm sure you've heard of Hertz and we've talked about them before on this show briefly and you would know that they'd recently declared bankruptcy. Now you would think that something like declaring bankruptcy would cause the stock to plummet in price and certainly it did for like a while, a week or maybe a few days and then it just ended up skyrocketing back. Uh, and then it went up like 800% and a lot of people just made an absolute killing off of her stock if they bought it at the bottom. Now ironically, Carl Icahn, who's a famous investor, he owned 39% of Hertz before they went bankrupt. And then when they declared bankruptcy, uh, Carl decided to just call it quits and just sell out of all his position in Hertz. Uh, now he sold at about 72 cents per share. Uh, on average, and then he lost about $2 billion of that transaction because uh, he just sold at pennies on the dollar, right? Because obviously he owned the company for a very long time and uh, he just had a ton of stock in the company for like a long-term investment. And obviously his cost basis was much higher than 72 cents per share. Now I bet he feels like an idiot seeing the stock price just absolutely skyrocket once again. Uh, but even I did not expect such a thing, right? I don't think anyone expected this stock to skyrocket just because uh, why would it, right? Because it's a company that has to declare bankruptcy and certainly I never saw it coming and Carl Icahn certainly never saw it coming either. Uh, so a lot of people have been wondering why is it exactly that Hertz has been skyrocketing the way it has and we're going to talk about that in today's video. Uh, so the main reason why the stock has skyrocketed is because of retail investors. So if you guys don't know what a retail investor is, it's basically the people on Wall Street Bets or on Robinhood that are just trading all these stocks and options. So retail investors are just like common people like you and me who just invest on their own behalf versus institutional investors who are, you know, billionaires like Warren Buffett or Carl Icahn or just hedge funds and investment banks or just representatives of companies that invest on behalf of very rich clients or behalf of other companies or behalf of their own company or you know just people who have decades of experience in the stock market. Uh, now this is an interesting phenomenon because of this Hertz situation where retail investors have really been pushing up this stock and hedge funds and the, all the institutional investors they've been the one losing big time because uh, they're the ones who are like the ones that are selling at like 72 cents a share or a dollar per share where the company just skyrockets back to like three or four dollars per share and the institutional investors they lost big time because they sold way too early probably at a loss versus all these Robin Hood investors and people who are trading on just their phones uh, they've been just making an absolute killing so to me this is both hilarious and scary at the same time this is hilarious because we have all these people on Robin Hood uh, who have pretty much no experience investing whatsoever or a lot of them have no experience I should say some of them do have experience but most of them are are very inexperienced and most of them are just beginners and they're just beating uh, the stock market and not only are they beating the stock market they're also beating people like Warren Buffett like Carl Icahn all these institutional investors uh, you know Warren Buffett sold airline stocks right at the bottom right and then airline stock just absolutely skyrocketed as well so it's not just Hearst but a lot of these big companies that institutional investors have just been dumping on uh, they've just all skyrocketed in value, right? I'm thinking of like Delta Airlines or American Airlines, all the airlines and Carnival Cruise, uh, all the cruise stocks, just hotels. At the same time, this is very scary to me. And this is because, uh, again, as I said, a lot of people who have these Robinhood accounts who are dumping money into companies like Hertz, uh, they have absolutely no understanding of how the financial system works or how the bankruptcy system works or what does it mean that a company goes bankrupt, right? Because if a company goes bankrupt, then the shares should be worth close to nothing. Because when a company declares bankruptcy, they liquidate all the assets of the company and the common shares are generally worth close to nothing. Now, I shouldn't say that they're worth absolutely nothing because there's a chance that the company could survive and 
and the company could get out of it. And there's a chance that even if they liquidate everything, there could be some money left over for the shareholders. But nine out of 10 times, when a company declares bankruptcy, the common shares are just worth nothing because by the time they liquidate all the assets and pay off all the bondholders who have priority over the common shareholders, uh, there's nothing left. So if you're a common shareholder, you'll just get completely wiped out. Your stock will literally go to zero. And also a lot of the articles I've been coming across are a little bit concerning. So I'll just be reading some of the headlines and a little bit of some of the articles that I've been coming across. And I'll let you be the judge of what you think of all these articles. So let's go. So I'm gonna grab my laptop here. So excuse me if I look away. Uh, so I'll put up a picture of what the article looks like, but I'm just gonna read off of uh, what I have on my computer screen. And I'll just read the headline of this market market watch article that I came across okay so so this article is about a day trader who shall not be named but his name starts with a D and he's uh, very famous on the internet so I've heard but anyways this particular investor says Warren Buffett is an idiot and day trading is the easiest game that he's ever played and he says quote I am better than he is that is a fact uh, so you have all these day traders talking about how they're better than Warren Buffett and this is just a little bit concerning because, uh, you know, he's, I, I don't doubt that he's making a killing, right? So I don't doubt that he's making, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars for trading stocks in the past few days because stocks have just absolutely skyrocketed. Uh, I don't doubt that. But uh, I think that uh, he's missing a little bit of uh, financial knowledge, right? So if, if he thinks that making money is so easy, so the way you got to think about it is that if making hundreds of thousands of dollars day trading is so easy, why would anyone do anything else, right? Obviously, you can't do this on a consistent basis in the long term, uh, the way that Warren Buffett invests, right? So day trading is not investing, by the way, it's just sort of just gambling, right? Uh, now, uh, I don't want to like trigger some of you, I know day trading, you got to look at like technical charts and things like that. And but a part of it also depends on a little bit of luck too. You got to admit, right, if you're a day trader, because a uh, part of it, even if all the indicators are pointing in the correct direction, you could still be wrong. And eventually uh, you might one day make a bad trade and then just lose a lot of money. Right. So uh, for especially for those people that are just going into day trading in the first place, uh, they have no idea what they're doing. And if you're saying that day trading is the easiest thing that you've ever done in your life, uh, then I feel like sometime in the future, you might be in for a nasty surprise. Now, I'm not saying that that's necessarily going to happen for sure, but it's just something a little bit of a concern, right? So uh, if you're getting into day trading because you see that, oh, if I just press this button and money just magically appears, uh, that's a little bit concerning. Anyways, so that's that article. Now let me move on to another article. So this article is about a 22-year-old young woman from Louisville, Kentucky, and basically she put her $1,200 stimulus check into a Robinhood account and started trading stocks. Uh, and she says, quote, it was basically free money. So, you know, I decided to play around with it. You might lose some, you might win some. It's like a gambling game. So, first of all, right off the bat, she's thinking of uh, this game as sort of like an investing, a gambling game instead of investing, right? So, she's thinking of it as a game. That's uh, the first, like, red flag right there, right? So, she's not really in it for the long term she's just in it for these gambles and i'm not saying you can't gamble a lot of people do but basically when you're gambling there's a high chance that you're losing money right or it depends on luck uh, a lot more than it depends on skill so uh, that's the first red flag right there and then the second red flag is that uh you know she currently holds positions in united airline holdings and ProShares ultra bloomberg crude oil etf uh, so first of all, uh, I don't, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe she did some research on United Airlines, right? So maybe she really looked into the company's financials and decided that it was a bet worth taking. Uh, now, personally, I think that United Airlines has a lot of debt. So that's definitely a big negative factor that you got to consider before you buy any stock. Now, personally, uh, I just made a video about why I sold my travel stocks. So uh, I'm not really too keen on picking up more travel stocks at the moment, especially at current levels, and especially not United Airlines, which is a company that's just like weighed down by a lot of debt. But I'll give her the benefit of the doubt that maybe she did her research on United Airlines and she... Uh, 
weighed the risk and reward, and then maybe she thought that it was worth the risk and reward. So I'll give her that. Uh, but the second part is the ProShares Ultra Bloomberg Crude Oil ETF. Uh, now, it's a leveraged ETF. So for those of you who don't know what a leveraged ETF is, it's basically they use all these financial derivatives to sort of multiply the effect of the ETF, the movement of the ETF relative to some index, right? So for example, uh, if the index moves up by 1%, then if it's a double leveraged portfolio, uh, like the way that it is with the ProShares Ultra Bloomberg, uh, then it will go up 2%, right? So if the index falls by 1%, it'll also fall by 2%. So it's sort of uh, the reason why they call it leverage is think about it. If you have like a giant like bar and you're trying to move a rock, right? So uh, it multiplies your power, but at the same time, if it goes down, it also multiplies your losses. So a leverage ETF is basically a more risky product just because of the fact that you know you can lose a lot more money if you're if you're wrong right so if the market moves against you then you can lose a lot more money uh so anyways uh, I don't think that she really understands how these like leverage products work. Uh, so it says that in the article that she's uh, making her first foyer into stocks, which means that she probably didn't have any financial education or uh, probably financial investing knowledge or experience before she started investing, before she received that $1,200 stimulus check, right? So uh, maybe I'll give her the benefit of the doubt on this one too. Maybe she did do her research and maybe she did uh, find out what a leverage ETF is and maybe she's like okay uh, I know what a leverage ETF is I know how it works I'm gonna put my money in it because I like the risk to reward maybe that is the case but something tells me that that's probably not the case right so she probably just uh, did it just because everyone else is doing it just because she wanted to make some quick bucks right and there's nothing wrong with making some quick bucks but uh, again guys like with these things it's very dangerous when you have like a lot of people in the market that have basically zero experience because they're the ones who are going to be panic selling if the market starts downturning, right? So the market, if the stock market starts crashing a little bit and you have a lot of people in these stocks or in the market that are inexperienced, they're absolutely going to freak out, right? So most people cannot handle seeing like a 20% loss in their stocks or in their portfolio and they log into their brokerage account and they see that they're down 20%, what are they going to do? They're going to panic sell, right? And then that triggers more panic selling because it just drives down the stock price uh, when everyone panics. And that's what leads to a crash. So yeah, basically, that's the reason why I said that this was scary. This is something that you see in Hertz, right? So Hertz is already starting to crash. And I think it hit like four or $5 per share at one point. And then now it's back under $2. Uh, the last time I checked, I don't know what the stock price is currently at the moment, I'll put up a chart of the latest stock price, it might have moved a lot by then the stock literally moves by like 20 30% a day. So it's impossible for me to keep track. But last time I checked, it was under two dollars. So it's already starting to crash. So it's to the point where I feel like a lot of people bought in at like four or five dollars. And then now they're just panic selling because they see uh, that it's going down by like 20, 30 percent a day. And yeah, I know I'm going to get a few comments and be like, Andy, you don't know anything. I made a killing off of Hertz. Again, as I said, you might have made money on Hertz. And I don't doubt that a lot of people did. But the fact is that it's it's a hot potato, right? You're just passing it on to the next sucker who will pay more. You're not actually investing in anything. You're just gambling, right? And you, sometimes when you're gambling, you get lucky. And if you made a killing off of Hertz, it's not because you're a super skilled investor. Uh, it's because you got lucky. There's a saying that goes like, uh, nobody knows who's naked until the tide goes out, right? So uh, when the tide goes out, you can see who's naked. So it's like now the tide is in because the stock market is up and everyone looks like they're a genius, right? So you just click a few buttons, you throw your money into the brokerage account, you click a few buttons and then you make money, right? So everyone looks like they're an absolute genius. And, uh, you know, Mark Cuban has touched upon this too, where, uh, you know, everyone seems like 
uh, they're making a killing and all these like institutional investors look like idiots who are selling right but then eventually i feel like there will be a market correction and when that time comes we'll see who's swimming naked uh, so the last thing i want to mention about hertz is the fact that they're restructuring so uh, the restructuring process i feel like a lot of people bought into the stock because they think that uh, after they restructure the company will survive and then uh, their stock will be worth something that's why they're buying in right and uh, certainly maybe there's a small chance of that happening but most of the time i'll say what happens is that when a company declares bankruptcy uh, they have to liquidate all their assets or they have to restructure and then they have to find some way to pay off the bondholders right so the bondholders the people who are holding the debt uh, they get first priority when they get paid when a company goes bankrupt so in a case like hertz all the people who have lent money to hertz instead of buying the shares they're gonna get paid first and uh, you know 99 percent of the time when it comes down to it uh, there's no more money left by the time you get to the common shareholders so the common shareholders will get paid last and then if you're buying into hertz now even if they survive what they might do is they might just wipe out all the common shares that are available right now and just issue new shares so they can do that because that's what a restructuring is right so uh, they'll just issue new shares and then just because you own the old shares doesn't mean that you're entitled to any of the new shares which means that if you're buying into hertz now that doesn't mean that you're going to be buying into the new hertz when they restructure uh, then that just means that your your stock is going to be wiped out they're just going to clear it it's going to be worth zero and then when they issue new shares you're not entitled to any of the new shares just because you own the old shares so that's like a thing that I don't think a lot of people realize when they're buying Hertz stock. And it hurts for me to think about it. Uh, sorry guys, I had to do that one. Come on, it was it was right there. Uh, so as I said, the stock is a total hot potato. And whoever holds the hot potato in the end, uh, they're going to get burned. And I think a lot of people are already getting burned because they bought in at a high price. And now the stock price has crashed back down. So if you want to gamble, go right ahead. But for me, uh, this is not a stock for me. And I won't be gambling with this stock either way. So I won't be betting if it goes up or down. So uh, this is a stock I am not touching with a 10-foot pole. Uh, that's my two cents on it. And yeah, like, good luck to you if you're playing it. Uh, so I'll leave the video here for today. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. And consider subscribing if you like this series. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'll leave the links down below in the description. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.